Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. Katie and I met through a mutual friend after college. One of my roommates was one of her best friends from high school. She would come to visit him, you know, to see Chicago. Charlie was brewing beer professionally at the time, and when I met him, he said he was a brewer, and I thought that was a fake job, and I didn't know what it was. But I was very wrong and learned all about his industry and went to a lot of your beer events at your brewery and he noticed that I wasn't drinking any of his beer and thought that was kind of weird. So I didn't know this but he was experimenting with different cider recipes and for my birthday made me a special cider as a surprise. I thought I was going to have to act like I liked it because most ciders at the time especially were really sweet but it was perfect, nice, dry and crisp and uh, we started dating pretty much right after that. I made Katie that cider for her birthday. It was still something that was very new to me and something that I felt, you know, if, if this was a possibility of starting a cidery someday, I needed to learn a lot more about it. I finished school in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm from Seattle. I was living in Omaha, Nebraska. I had met him. I was moving to Chicago anyway. I would point that out. I did not move because of him. It was just an added and then Charlie took a job in a different state, asked me to come with him. I said, absolutely not. I just moved to Chicago. I was here to learn about the city and have fun. So we were dating long distance during that time. And then you proposed, so I had to move. <laughs> really early on when we started dating, I knew that he wanted to start his own brewery. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. I kind of knew I wanted to do something, but I wasn't really sure what. So we just kind of met in the middle and, and knew that it was gonna be cider. While we were living out of state, we were simultaneously planning a wedding and a business at the same time. So we'd go, uh, we'd go post up at a coffee shop or a bar or something like that, and we would, you know, we would both have our computers up and we'd be bouncing our ideas. We had the name really early and we had the idea pretty early on, but it took a while for it to come to fruition. We're the type of people that we would never just rush into a business unless we felt like we were ready or we had the experience to do so. It's not just the recipe for how to make it, which is a huge piece, but where are we going to get the apples from? Where are we going to make the cider? We need to think about all the background admin, the taxes, the licensing, the, the zoning. How are we going to sell it? How are we going to market it? What package is it going to be in? I mean, there's so much that goes into starting a business besides the cider itself. We actually started just north of Chicago and Lincolnwood. We had a small shared warehouse space and, you know, I, I would say essentially a cool little broom closet in a lot of ways. And we had a, we had pretty shoddy equipment. Um, we had a cooler inside of an old storage shed in the alley outside the back. In order to drop the temperature of the liquid, we'd have to move the cider from our tanks in this back room into the tank that's inside the cooler in the alley. We were in Lincolnwood for a couple of years and we more or less proved a business model. We grew you know, steadily and eventually got some friends, family, and fools to, to help us invest in new equipment and move into our current facility located on the west side of Chicago in the old Schwinn Bike Building. We ferment everything in these three tanks, so we get about 5,500 gallons of fresh pressed apple musk from southwest Michigan, and we pitch it into these tanks with the awesome champagne style yeast. Mm -hmm. So everything goes into these tanks, we, we ferment for about a week, and over the course of that week, that yeast metabolizes the sugar and the oxygen in solution and creates carbon dioxide and alcohol. And we ferment everything completely dry, meaning there's zero residual sugar. Um, and from there, we can add any kind of sweetening, like the honey from our bees, or we can add other fruit or you know herbs and spices if we're making a different flavor. From these things, we can put it in half barrel kegs, six barrel kegs. We also do 12 ounce bottles, and we just started canning. And this is our canning line right here. When we first started our business, we needed tap handles, the things that you see on draft at bars and restaurants. We met with a company when we first started this business, and they gave us a quote for tap handle design and production. It was way more expensive than we could afford. So we got a handrail from Lowe's, 
just like a regular construction handrail you would see in a house. We cut them into pieces, spray painted them yellow, and I tried to paint straight lines and quickly realized that I couldn't, so I just put electrical tape around them with an RBC, and those are still the tap handles that you see around the city, and Charlie has the finished product. So that's what they look like. We had this dream. Our cider brought us together, and we were just hoping that, that cider could bring other people together too. And we saw it a little bit when we would go around town and we would see our cider being poured at different accounts and I would get really excited and go talk to every single person in the restaurant that was, that was drinking it. But when they come here, it's just so much different that they get to enjoy it right where we make it. And when we opened the doors, we kind of thought it would just be our family and friends coming in all the time. But we started to get random people who we had never met before. And they started coming back and coming back. And I would text him, I'm like, do we have regulars? Are, are the regulars here? And we started to get to get people from all over the state coming in who, who I didn't even know, even knew who we were. People from down the street come in and they started talking. They were sitting in the bar next to each other. And it turns out that they live in the same building. They never really talk to one another. They've become friends as well. Yeah, so it's, it's, been, it's been so cool to watch strangers become regulars, regulars become friends. And this is one of the best parts of the business. When people can come in and enjoy the cider where it's made and basically everything that we want in the tap room to be, it is. Tonight, the governors of New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut taking drastic and historic action. Residents of multiple states told to go home and stay home as the coronavirus crisis explodes across the nation. We were really looking forward to the spring and summer, and I was actually nine months pregnant at the time. Yeah, I remember being in the tap room when Governor Pritzker announced that the state was, was shutting down. And at first thinking, oh, what was me? You know, why just the bars and the restaurants? This seems unfair. It seems like we're being targeted and all this stuff. And it, you learn pretty quickly that everybody was being affected by this. And yeah. it really put things into perspective. It was tough because we felt like our business was snowballing. It was becoming what we really wanted it to be. Our tap room was, you know, drawing off some customers and we were having events here. And all of a sudden, all of that went away. Our business was being shut down. Within 24 hours, we had to completely change our business model and have online ordering and have delivery and essentially turn our tap room into a liquor store where it was you know, safe and contactless pickup delivery, but we had never done that before and had to get it all functional within one day. Not to mention, I'm nine months pregnant and I don't even know if you're gonna be allowed in the delivery room and our business is being shut down. So. We started doing online ordering and delivery and learning different ways to interact with our customers besides and inside of our tap room. It also gave us a chance to, you know, audit our business and for me to, you know, go to school and, and just learn more about how we can be effective moving forward. I go into labor and Charlie, as I'm in labor, is checking emails about how we're going to be pivoting our business. We had to make changes instantly and it didn't matter what was going on in the world. If People ask me all the time what it's like to work with your spouse and for us it's all we've really ever known. We started this business six months after our wedding but you have to have perfect communication otherwise it will amplify, we're starting a business might amplify any existing issues you might have in your, in your relationship because you're going to be tired, you're going to be stressed and a lot of times they're just there just isn't time for hurt feelings because there's so much that you have to get done. And you're either one or the other. You're either a rock star spouse or a rock star business partner. You can't be the same thing in the same day. The best part about working with your spouse is that you never have to have the conversation when you get home, you know, like, how was your day at the office? I mean, you have the same goal, you're in it together, you know what the other person's going through. You might be the only other person on the planet who really understands what that person's going through and you just don't even have to have that conversation.
it's a good thing because the highs are higher, but it can be really difficult because the lows are that much lower because there's really no escaping the stress of the business. But at the end of the day, at least you have somebody with you who's going through it at the same time. Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. Chicago, 